Well, Tata Steel, that's the stock in focus after its numbers came out and it has been a poor set. There is no way to sugarcoat the performance that you've seen from Tata Steel in the second quarter. So let me pick up on that discussion point. We have with us Mr. TV Narendran joining in on the show right now. Mr. Narendran, great to have you on the show and I have to talk about Tata Steel Europe first, right? Because that EBITDA per ton loss that you've posted now for a fourth consecutive quarter, uh, can we now say that the worst could be behind us? Because I recall when we were chatting with you uh, post the first quarter numbers, um, you said that things are looking up and that first second half is going to be better. Yeah. So, Aisha, I think uh, what I had guided at the end of the first quarter was that second quarter will also be challenging because there are two things happening in Europe. You know, one is our UK business, which has always uh, struggled in difficult market conditions. We continue that struggle, but... At least we have a plan for the future and we are restructuring the business and all that is going on. But the other part of our European business, which has traditionally been EBITDA positive, cash positive, is Netherlands. And uh, we are undertaking a blast furnace relining there. So 40% of our production is down because uh, that blast furnace, uh, we have two blast furnaces. This produces 40% and we have another one which produces 60%. So this blast furnace has been down since April and it will come back towards the end of November. So we've got two quarters with 60% production levels, and that has an impact on costs. And that's why we've had a negative EBITDA uh, over the last two quarters. So we expect this quarter to be better in Netherlands than the last quarter. And uh, in Q4, we will come back to the positive EBITDA territory from the Netherlands that we've always seen. So that's a story on Europe, and that's what is reflected in the numbers that you saw for Q2. Sure. So I I'm just going to reiterate and get it on record. You're saying with Q2's performance, both UK and Netherlands have bottomed out. Is that a yes or a no? Uh, Netherlands, yes. UK is uh, obviously nothing is changing apart if the market conditions improve, of course, we will get better because UK, the big challenge has been some of the assets are coming to the end of life. And that's why we are taking up this restructuring. So there may not be a significant improvement in UK, but they will be a better numbers coming out of Netherlands in Q3 and Q4 compared to Q2. Okay. But tell me, now that, you know, cooking coal as well as other raw material prices are also on the uptick once again, where do you see your Europe spreads headed in the second half? So, uh, obviously, that's a challenge. But the reality is also that most steel companies, whether in Europe or in China, uh, at these uh, cooking coal prices and these spreads are not making money. So, our you know, at single digit EBITDA margin levels. So as a consequence of that, we expect either the coking coal prices and iron ore prices to start moving down or steel prices to start moving up because this level uh, of operation at this level of spread is not sustainable for the industry. You've seen announcements uh, of blast furnace shutdowns in Europe. Uh, you're seeing production restrictions happening in China uh, because uh, and also margin losses in China. So I think there will be a correction going forward either in prices or in volume, which will help improve the spreads in uh, Q4. Okay. I also want to talk about the UK restructuring because I think it's very critical right now. Uh, because last month you announced this mega restructuring wherein the UK government also is going to make one contribution. Uh, how is it that you're going to be funding your share of CapEx of 70, 750 million pounds? Yeah. So that's uh, money we'll have to put into the project. But I think that's money which we feel is uh, going to uh, pay back on its own simply because uh, when we restructure and uh, trans uh, you know transition into a new process route, which leverages the scrap that is available in the UK, the competitive position of Tata Steel UK will change. And uh, it will be in a position where it can uh, be profitable on an ongoing basis without support uh, from India as we've been doing so far. And the 500 million grant support that we're getting from the government make sure that uh, this transition is, uh, you know, affordable in that sense of the term. We are also looking at some OPEX and policy support, uh, which we are in discussion with the government. So we, the government has decided to put in money because they also see that at the end of this, you will have a sustainable business, which is greener and uh, more suited for the future that we want to see for ourselves in the UK. Right. Uh you know, reports are suggesting that this entire transition of restructuring in UK could actually lead to a job cut of about 3,000 headcount. And please correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, because, you know, they believe that EAFs are less intensive. Have consultations with labor unions already begun? 
Yeah, the consultations are going on. I think, uh, yes, uh, we will uh, need fewer, uh, we will have fewer jobs than we do today because an EAF operation is more simpler than the current uh, configuration. Uh, the exact number is what is being discussed with the unions. Uh, the informal consultations have started uh, a few weeks back. Uh, all the details that the unions and the uh, uh, you know, third party that they've appointed to look at the details have been given. They're supposed to come back with a proposal and then the formal consultation will start. But so the process is ongoing. And I think uh, uh, that is what we are uh, uh, expecting to do over the next few weeks. But I'm sure you have some back of the envelope calculation, right? How much would be the financial impact of this, uh, you know, headcount downsizing exercise? How much would the saving be? So I think I, I don't want to get into specific numbers just now till the consultation process is over because we are expected to have a meaningful consultation and uh, look at all options presented by the unions. But I, all I can say is uh, we have made provisions in Q2, uh, not only for impairment, but for the restructuring costs. And that's why you see the one-off hit that you see in our results. So we provided for all that. Okay, but have restructuring costs been fully accounted for? Yes. Okay, great. Um, the other thing I also want to talk about is domestic operations, uh, you know, obviously, because the India operations, thankfully, have shown a lot of resilience. How much volume growth do you foresee for H2? Uh, not much of volume growth for H2 because all our operations are running at full capacity. Uh, the only one uh, which we were ramping up was Nilachal, which is uh, also running at full capacity. So I don't see too much of volume growth, maybe a little bit marginal, because Nilachal was not operating at full capacity in H1. But uh, beyond that, all our other plants are operating at full capacity. You will see volume growth next year, uh, which is when the Kalinganagar 5 million ton completion uh, would have happened. Uh, some of the completion has already happened on coal rolling mill and the pellet plant. So you'll see the volume impact next year. Uh, the volume increase this year, if at all, is uh, going to be about half a million compared to last year and on an overall basis. Yeah. Sure. And what about the India EBITDA per ton? Because it's already down 16% sequentially. Now with RM costs upping up, uh, what could be the impact on spreads? I think for Q3, what we are guiding is that the uh, we expect realizations to be about 2,200 rupees per ton higher in Q3 compared to Q2. And we expect coal prices, consumption cost to be about $10, $11 higher in Q3 compared to Q2. So you will see a margin expansion in uh, Q3. Q4, it's still early to say because we're waiting to see what happens to the spreads over the next few weeks. Mm. You know, the other thing about that the street is worried about a little bit, uh, Mr. Narendran, is that you targeted a $1 billion debt reduction each year, right? You failed yeah. to achieve that uh, target in FY23. In the first half of FY24 as well, debt has only now risen to about 77,000 odd crore rupees. What is the deleveraging plan that you've put in place for the second half of the fiscal? Yeah, so, uh, you know, so if you look at the second half of the fiscal, uh, we will see better numbers coming out of Europe. That has been a drag for us in H1, and that was one of the reasons why uh, you know, we didn't generate the cash flows that we thought we would generate in uh, uh, in Tata Steel. As far as India is concerned, most of it is because we are reaching the final stages of the Kalinganagar expansion projects. So the capex uh, uh, numbers, which we had guided for sixteen thousand crores for the year, most of it for India, continues. And uh, you know, so for us, the challenge is to balance the need to complete the Kalinganagar project and get additional cash flows coming out of that versus uh, the debt reduction target that uh, we had committed to. So we'll find a balance. We will see what is the best way to do that and uh, see how best can we stay within the uh, levels that we want to stay. But yes, it's a challenging, it's been a challenging year as far as debt reduction is concerned. Mm, yeah, sure. What about the global macro environment though? I mean, where is it that you see HRC uh, prices actually headed? So today, if you look at uh, hot oil coil prices, uh, they are reflecting the fact that China is ex exporting about 8 million tons a month. You know, uh, in 2015, China was exporting 10 million tons a month. And that's when global steel prices dropped to a very low level. Uh, thereafter, it went down to about 5 million tons a month. And then you saw steel prices more in the 600 to 700 or 600 to 750 dollar range. 
when china exports at this current level then you you tend to see steel prices in the 500 to 600 dollar range or profile prices so i think what is key is how much will china export going forward i expect it to export less because one is most chinese steel companies are losing money at these prices uh, so you're already seeing some of them cutting production secondly in winter some of the provinces uh, put pressure on them to cut production. We've already seen two other provinces which account for almost 40-50% of Chinese steel production uh, put in some restrictions. So I expect exports to start dropping from the 8 million ton levels that we've seen for the last six months. And as it drops, the uh, prices uh, should start moving towards $600. Uh, you know, otherwise, this is not sustainable. At cooking coal at uh, $330, $340, iron ore at $115, and uh, hot roll coils at five forty dollars. I think that's not uh, an equation that works. Right. You know, I have to clear the air on this. I know you've time and again gone on record and said that you know you're focusing on organic expansion, not inorganic. But Vedanta is looking to sell its uh, steel business. Would you be interested at Tara Steel? I think we will obviously prioritize our organic growth. Just now, the focus is on completing the Kalinganagar expansion. We have a new plant coming up in Ludhiana. It's an electric car furnace-based operation, which should come up in the next two years. So we'll focus on these two projects for India for now. Uh, we look at the international markets. We look at our balance sheet and plan the next phase of organic expansion because we have enough opportunities uh, for organic expansion in India within our existing sites. And that, we believe, uh, will be most uh, co more cost-effective for us. Okay, so that's a complete no then for Vedanta Steel Business, is it? I didn't say that, but all I'm saying is our focus will be on organic growth. Sure. What about NMDC steel? Our focus will be on organic growth. <laughs> okay. I'll leave you to that. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.